Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, as Steve said, my name is Camille Fournier. I'm the CTO at Rent the Runway, and I'm here to talk about how to become a multiplier, not a manager. So let's start with a little bit of a thought exercise. If you could clone yourself within the context of work, what would you do? So your clone can't do your laundry for you, but it can do things at the office. Maybe you would have your clone deal with your emails while you learned Haskell, or you would have your clone handle all those boring meetings and interviews while you played around with Docker, okay? Let's imagine that your clone can only help you be more productive fairly immediately, right? So all work and no play, okay? Maybe, okay, you get another feature out the door, you'd write that run book you've been meaning to write, maybe you'd finally, you know, get to the performance tuning on that page that's been annoying you for a while. Technical skills, getting more done. These are the things that we tend to focus on as engineers when we're setting goals for ourselves. Uh, I do it too, it's, you know, it's very easy to do, but if you think about it, even with your clone, if this is what you're focusing on, you're getting about twice as much better, right? So you've got a curve that looks like this, right? You put in input, you get twice as much impact, which is awesome, but not what I think of when I think of being a multiplier. I think of a curve that looks like this. Let's zoom out a little bit. Forgive my silly curves, I'm not a great PowerPoint person. Uh, both lines start out pretty much the same, but the multiplier's impact quickly pulls away from that of the person creating additive value. So if you want to become a multiplier, it's going to require a different function than just learning new technical skills. It's going to require more than thinking about your own skills, but require doing something else. Fortunately, I believe that everyone in this audience has the basic virtues they need to become a multiplier. So let's dig in. But before we do that, I want to talk about technical skills because I can see you all sharpening your pitchforks right now on the idea that technical skills might not be the most important thing. Okay. You're here to learn new technical skills, probably, uh, and technical skills are foundational. They are super important, right? As an engineer, you build everything on a foundation of technical skills, then you add some other stuff and top it off with don't be a jerk, okay? <laughs> technical skills. Awesome. But because we have to spend so much of our career focusing on technical skills, especially in the first years, we start to fall victim to availability bias. We start to see every problem has a technical skill-based solution. If we're not as productive as we want to be, we just need to make fewer mistakes and get a little more done, and then we're going to be there, right? It becomes our go-to answer. Of course, the other side of availability bias is that we tend to think of things that have you know, gory consequences more than the common consequences. And the gory consequences of ignoring your technical skills is, oh my god, you're not techy enough. Your hands are off the keyboards. You're turning into a pointy-haired boss. All right. So we're all very nervous, frankly, about focusing on anything other than the most technical stuff. But here's the thing, right? Bottlenecks over time in your career. You are bottlenecked by technical skills in the beginning. Absolutely, you're looking at man pages, you're reading Stack Overflow, you're making a bunch of mistakes. But at some point, here's what will probably happen to all of you if it hasn't happened yet. You think to yourself, God, if I just had a week or a month, I could go over to that team, sit down with them, dig in, and figure out what the heck is going wrong and fix it. If you have thought of that, your bottleneck is not your technical skills. Your bottleneck is your time and your focus. So you can continue to learn your technical skills. You can, you should. That's really important. But if you want to become a multiplier, you're going to have to do something a little bit different. Fortunately, I believe that all engineers possess the three virtues they need to become a great multiplier. Laziness, impatience, and hubris. As said by, of course, one of our patron saints of programming, Larry Wall. So laziness as an engineer means that you automate things that you might do manually. And laziness as a multiplier means that you put in a little bit of effort to train the people around you how to do what you know how to do so you don't have to do it anymore, right? It's the closest thing to cloning yourself. 
and it removes a lot of bottlenecks in your organization. In particular, it frees you up so that you can actually move on to do other things and grow in different ways and make other teams better. The second virtue is impatience. An impatient engineer writes code that anticipates their future needs. An impatient multiplier doesn't do the stuff that isn't important. If all you're focused on doing is taking your list of tasks and getting faster at checking them all off, that's great, but that's not what a multiplier does. What a multiplier does is looks at the list of tasks, not only for themselves, but for everyone on their team and says, why the hell are we doing half of this stuff? It's not worth doing. I want to find the three most important things, do them, get them out, start learning from them so that we can set a better future value, so that we can learn what we should be doing and move forward. Finally, hubris, excessive pride. An engineer with an excessive pride believes that the code they write is beautiful. They want everyone to see it. They want everyone to read it. They are really, really proud of their work. A multiplier with excessive pride has a high value of their own opinion. In particular, if the world's burning down around them, they don't say, this is fine. They say, uh, hey, this build takes three hours. It's slowing down the whole team. I want to take myself and a few others and go off for a couple of weeks and do something about it. We have too many alerts. It's dragging us all down. We have too many meetings. It's wasting a lot of time. How can we have fewer meetings? How can we get rid of some of these alerts? They work to think about not only how to make the technology better, but how can the whole team be a little more productive, a little bit happier? There are probably other things you will have to do to become a multiplier. That whole don't be a jerk triangle encompasses many behaviors. But I believe that everyone in this audience at least can do these three things and start to create multiplier effects in their organizations. So, of course, I would be remiss in addressing this audience if I didn't talk about how do you measure it, right? This is what you guys care about. Well, unfortunately, there's no web page test for your tech skills versus people or whatever skills. What I can do is give you some vocabulary that describes what you're looking to improve. And that vocabulary is impact and influence. Impact, but for this engineer, what wouldn't exist? But for this engineer, what features wouldn't happen? What projects wouldn't exist? But for this person, what teams wouldn't be formed at this company? What business growth or organizational growth wouldn't we be having? Influence. Influence does not require having a big reporting structure underneath you. Influence can be simply, how often do people come to me for advice? How well known am I for my judgment, right? It can be gained through a record of good judgment, high impact behavior, and wisdom. As you increase these two things, these are what increase as your impact increases because that's what people are looking for, right? As you become a multiplier, you have bigger impact and more influence. Now, of course, these things are very closely related to leadership, and leadership requires active engagement with others. You are not leading computers around. That's great. It's a useful skill, but that's not really what you're trying to do to become a multiplier. So if you want to figure out what others think of you, ask them. You may have a 360 degree review process at your job where you do something like this, but even if you do or don't, it's very easy. Create an anonymous Google form, put in what do I do well and how should I improve or what areas do you think I need to grow in? Send it to a few people and ask them. Ask them to fill it out. You'll be surprised by what you learn from this exercise about what you are doing well and what you are not doing well. Or you'll be surprised. There'll be things that you don't think that are that important that everyone's like, oh my God, when you did that thing, when you complained about all those meetings and we had fewer, it just improved our whole organization. Beware selection bias, though, in doing this, right? There's that other, another bias. You don't just want to ask people who love you, and don't just ask people who hate you either, by the way. Don't just ask the people who work most closely with you, but try to get a selection of people to give you feedback. So to wrap this up, and hey, I went really fast, so gave you guys some time back. Uh, 
this velocity DevOps movement, this stuff is pretty awesome because it actually has created a culture where organizational structures have evolved to enable a lot more people to be multipliers. It used to be that you really kind of did have to be a manager in many companies to be a multiplier. That is no longer true. If you are working in an organization that's embracing DevOps and this kind of uh, philosophy, you have the potential and ability to become a multiplier. But to take advantage of this, you're going to need to stretch yourself. Cloning yourself, doing more, getting more done, getting a little bit better is great, but it's additive impact. Instead of working on what you know, on only focusing on learning new technical skills, getting more done, it, you need to get out of your comfort zone. Rely on your virtues, proactive laziness, thoughtful impatience, and team-oriented hubris. These are the path to creating outsized impact, improving everyone around you, improving everyone around you, and becoming a true multiplier. Thank you very much.